to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, we have an addendum, and I think that's the only thing. Okay. I'd just like to make another adjustment. Oh. Yeah, I just uh, would like to have a, a, a report from the building committee added to item 10 on the committee report. Thank you. Okay, approval of the school board minutes for May. We have a regular school board meeting which was held on May 10th. Are there any adjustments? Um, on communications under 5E, I had thanked the um, music and arts staff for the arts week and it says in the minutes Pond Cove School, it should be corrected to say middle and high school. Okay. Thank you. Any other corrections to those minutes? Uh, all in favor of approving those minutes? As amended. As amended. Six zero. Next item, there was a special meeting held on May 24th. Any amendments? Seeing none, all in favor of accepting the uh, minutes of the May 24th meeting? Six zero. I'd like to welcome our high school and middle school students for their comments. <coughs> Before you begin, um, I'd like the high school and middle school students to stop up here on at the end of their report for a moment. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> Okay, um, so we're done on Friday, which means we're taking finals right now. Uh, we have two each day, and so everyone's just trying to study up and get those finished and get to summer. Um, the seniors graduated, as you probably all know, on Sunday. Uh, it was really nice out, it was a really nice ceremony. A uh, band from the school played, a piano player from the graduating class played. Uh, I think everyone really enjoyed it. And then the seniors went off on their project graduation trip. And um, I know they went to Boston. I'm not really sure what they did there, but I know they all enjoyed it a lot. So I think that was a success. And uh, their senior gift was uh, a new flagpole for out front with three new flags, which is a really nice gift. And I think that'll look really nice out front. Uh, in terms of spring sports, lacrosse team still doing well, looking towards the state game. Uh, the tennis team actually lost in the finals to Camden Hills, but they had a great season. And the boys track team uh, won the state championship, and the girls track team came in second. So we had a really great sports season this year. Um, the play was at the beginning of the month, but I haven't been here since before that, so. Uh, just wanted to tell you it all. It went really well. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I saw it twice, actually. Um, I think everyone enjoyed it. It was damn Yankees, by the way. Um, and then I guess the biggest thing that's happened is we had our elections for uh, student government. And that's changed since last year. It used to be we elected class officials for each grade, as well as certain SAC positions. Uh, such as the one that I am filling right now, which is representative to the school board. Um, but this year we got rid of the SAC positions, and now the SAC will just be made up of the class officer positions. And then within that, uh, within that group, we will then elect SAC positions from those. So it'll be smaller, but we'll still have all the same positions. And so those are over. Uh, I think we have a really good group. Um, I was elected vice president of my class, so I 
may or may not be visiting with you again next year. Uh, I hope so. And so things are going well. Looking forward to summer. Terrific. Any questions? No, I, I do just want to thank you for coming on your um, evenings to give us your reports. I think we've all really appreciated it. And thank I've enjoyed you. it. Thanks. Thank you for having me. And now if you would come right up here to the guy with the hammer. Thank you so very much for your service to the board. This is a little token of appreciation. And would you give this to Mr. Shedd? Thank you. In our middle school, Um, good evening. I know I'm speaking for the whole school when I say I'm excited for the upcoming summer. Personally, in these past few weeks, I have not had a minute to spare, and I think my fellow classmates would agree that our schedules have been packed. Just yesterday, part of the fifth grade enjoyed a whale watch. Fortunately, they had a great day. The other half of the grade will go tomorrow. In eighth grade, students are getting anxious for their freshman year. The eighth grade had the recognition night on Thursday, and the PTA did such a wonderful job in creating an amazing and fun night for us. Mr. Filio, Ms. Paquette, and Mr. Price were the guest speakers, and they performed a hilarious skit and sang us a song. They did a magnificent job. Thanks go out to all the teachers and parents who put this evening on for us. The seventh and eighth grade had their last dance on June 3rd, and the theme was a hoedown. And many lucky fifth and sixth graders headed to Seacoast Fun Park for their last social of the year. Today, the school enjoyed an in-concert, um, in-school concert given by the seventh and eighth grade bands and chorus. We have 150 students in our eighth grade, 121 playing the band. I think that that speaks to how wonderful a music teacher Mr. White is. Step up day is on Thursday, and I believe the eighth graders will receive their schedules for ninth grade. Friday is beach day. Fifth grade goes to Crescent, sixth and seventh to Scarborough, and the eighth graders head to Old Orchard Beach. The eighth grade will be building, have been building rockets in science, and those have been going very well, and everybody is doing a final lunch tomorrow. Um, the eighth grade had their elections for next year, and after a bit of electronic difficulty, we finally came up with our officers for next year. All spring sports have officially ended. The track team did very well in the states, and both the boys and girls, eighth grade lacrosse teams won their last game against Yarmouth. I know I'm speaking for the, all the students and faculty when I say we're going to miss Miss Hunt and Miss Van Wy. They both have been very dedicated to our middle school. We hope you come back and visit. In conclusion, I'd like to say I've really enjoyed being a school board rep, and I'd like to say thanks for making it so fun. So thank you. Any questions? Um, hi, I'm Elsa Mullen. The entire middle school is getting ready and excited for summer. To show that summer is here, the whole middle school is going to beach day on Friday, and the sixth and seventh graders, as Nora said, are going to Scarborough Beach. They should have a wonderful time there, if the, at least if the rain holds off. Um, at school, many things are wrapping, wrapping up. Spring sports, baseball, softball, lacrosse, and track are, fin are finished with. The track team had their state meet on June 3rd. The lacrosse and base uh, the lacrosse team, baseball, and softball also finished up shortly ago. The seventh grade listened to an African speaker yesterday. He talked about his culture. Although I did not get to watch, I heard it was great to listen to and extremely interesting. He brought in many things from his culture, such as tribal masks. He told them how different signs mean different things in his language. He told them about things that really matter in life and finding out who you are. Rodman Philbrook, um, a famous author, author came to talk to the sixth grade. He talked to, to them about how I became and started to become an author. He, he is related to one of the sixth graders at Cape, Elizabeth. Um, some of the books he wrote are Young Men in the Sea and Freak the Mighty. I would just like to say thank you to Ms. Hutton for your time and effort in, as middle school principal as we wish you well in the next chapter of your life as you retire. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Don't go away just yet. I really want to thank the two of you for outstanding service to this board during the year and giving up your time. You've represented your school extraordinarily well, and I hope that you will continue in these kind of roles as you finish off middle school and go on into the high school. And I would like to present you with a little token of our appreciation, Nora and Allison, if you'd come up. 
Thank you so very much. Thank you. Enjoy. We'll move on to communications. We have three agenda, and I believe there are some other comments to be made as well. So we'll begin with uh, Bob E. Ray Grant. Uh, yes, um, just very briefly, we received notice this past week of the uh, 20th annual allocation of the E-rate monies. Um, if you, um, the material was in the school board packets, it amounts to about $18,000 to help with technology work and things in the district, and uh, we're thankful for that. That's federal money coming back to us. Um, on a separate item, we had notification of four awards by the Cape Elizabeth Arts Commission. Uh, those awards went to Emma Logan, Megan Clark, Ariana Belcher, and Miwa Jerkowitz um, for um, their art um, that, that was rated by the Art Association. And we also received, no received notification um, and I'll just quickly read this. We received news today that Lauren Yokobaskis has been accepted to participate in the 2006 All Eastern Honor Choir in New York City and will be making her Carnegie Hall debut on February 18, 2006. Over a thousand audition tapes were submitted this year from students hoping to get one of the 250 seats in the choir. Lauren is one of seven students from Maine who were selected. So our congratulations to her. That's it, unless there were other th things from other people. Mm -hmm. Elaine? Um, I, just, I would just like to take this opportunity um, to thank some people regarding uh, this weekend's graduation ceremonies um, for our high school graduates. Um, I'd never been to a graduation ceremony before. And um, I happened to have a daughter who graduated, so I went this year. <laughs> but. Um, I was just so impressed by the whole week of all the um, banquets, um, the recognition of the, the very accomplished class that just graduated, from the speeches by the students and the valedictorians to um, comments by Jeff and the faculty regarding um, very personal traits that really showed how much they knew our kids. Um, and I just thought it was a great ceremony. Um, and I also want to thank the parents who put together uh, the project graduation. Um, I know as a parent I went to bed that night knowing that my child was safe um, but was still having the opportunity to, to celebrate uh, her achievements. So I know a lot of work went into it and I heard such wonderful comments about what a great time they had. Uh, they went to Boston. And uh, I want to thank that class also for their donation of the flagpole and the flags to our school being on the building committee. I know it's something we wanted to do, that it's something that we have been trying to do, but now we'll have a nice new flagpole for our brand new school renovation project. So, um, thank you. I wanted to thank um, Shari Robinson, Tracy Greenwood, and Marlene Potter at the Pond Cove Media Center for their work on research night this year and for the past 10 years um, and their efforts for keeping this event going. It's such a great event. 150 students participated this year, and it's such a great event. Um, it, it captures our, do the students' natural desire to learn and their it, it, opportunity to share with others, um, and it gives them a great opportunity to display that. So thank you for the, the Pond Cove Media Center staff and the Pond Cove other faculty and staff that support the kids' efforts as they research over the years. Over the, excuse me, over the weeks and the years, yes, both. Thank you. Kathy? Question for Bob on the uh, E-rate grants. Yes. Does that 18000 come directly back to our technology department or the school department? It comes to the school department, yes. Thank you. Anything else? I'd just like to toss in my own two cents on the graduation as it was the first one where I was a more active participant since the class of 2000. And uh, I must say, in the words of a famous New Yorker whose name began Yogi, it was deja vu all over again. Um, those speeches took me back too many years. <laughs> 
and reminded me of the great class of 1969. So it was quite an honor. And I'd also like to thank whoever um, it was who decided to uh, recognize the veterans for some that was a homecoming. Um, thank you. We have finished with communications and we have an opportunity for comments from the public on non-agenda items. And I guess we will not have any comments from the public. Um, and we will proceed on to recognition. Bob, I'm just gonna read the names. Just to, can I do that? Would you like to? Yeah, might as well. Okay. Um, I would just like to say that it's been tradition to recognize teachers um, and people in the school system who reach five years of service, 10 years of service, 15 years, 20, 25, 30, 35 or more. And um, I think it's a great tradition uh, because that's what makes the school system is the people who have been here and have worked together. And uh, Kevin will read the names of those people who are reaching those milestones at the end of this year. Please bear with me. This is a rather extensive list, um, but it is one of the perks of the job. For five years service, Elizabeth Campbell, special ed, Jean Cunningham, special ed, ed tech, Allison Caruso, middle school, grade six, Sharon Gillies, or Giles, I'm sorry, uh, middle school, ed tech, Peter Guttard, Custodian, Bob McVean, Maintenance, Beth Otis, Pond Cove Computer Lab and EdTech, Joanne Paquette, Middle School Grade 7, Mark Pendarvis, High School Spanish, Marlene Potter, Pond Cove Media Center EdTech, Susan Ray, Athletic Office Secretary, Arlene Rochefort, Business Office, Kim Sturgeon, Middle School Guidance, Holly Swenson, middle school, grade eight. Robin, excuse me. She missed it by one, she was seven, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my mistake. Holly Swenson, middle school, grade seven, even though it says grade eight. That's okay. correct. Okay. Um, Ruben Taylor, food services, Robin Taylor, food services, that's my glasses. Kathy Walsh, middle school, grade five. Jennifer Williams, special education ed tech. Leslie Young Community Services. For 10 years of service, Sandra Brown, Food Services, Charlie Carroll, Middle School, Grade 6, Donald Darling, Custodian, Tom Eismeyer, Pond Cove Principal, Norman Hascom, Custodian, Cheryl Higgins, Middle School, Grade 5, Tom Harmon, Custodian, Sonia Medina, High School Spanish, Richard Roethlisberger, High School Art, 15 years service. Joyce Bell, High School Librarian. Katie Lisa, High School Social Worker. Betty Nilsson, High School Computer Lab. Ogden Williams, Pond Cove, Grade 4. 20 years service. Joe Doan, Middle School, Grade 6. Judy Liberty, High School, French. Richard Munson, bus driver. Deborah Jordan Pearson, Pond Cove Reading Recovery. Jim Ray, high school industrial technology. Louise Strout, business office. Becky Swift, Pond Cove Reading Recovery. 25 years service. Charlotte Hanna, high school math. Nancy Hutton, middle school principal. Sue Weatherby, community services director. I know I saw you come in, Sue. 30 years service, Andrea Kayer, High School Health. And finally, 35 years service, Susan Welch, Pond Cove, Grade 4. Mary Murphy, is she still M cubed? M four. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, middle School, Grade 8. And Jerry Strout, Custodian. Um, what can I say, but thank you all for your outstanding service to the students of Cape Elizabeth. Um, it's just amazing to see a list like this.
Thank you again. Um, I believe we will do something again at the beginning of school. Beginning next of school. Year. Yes. With the staff. And the next item is um, recognition of retiring faculty and staff. Um, do you have that list? You join me? I'll read from up here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to invite the, uh, the administrator for each of these people to come up and say a few words about them, start, <coughs> starting with the administrator for Rindy Martin. Tom? If we're going to do three Pond Cove teachers, I'd like to say to something at the end, too. Um, okay. It's a privilege and an honor to do each of these three teachers. I want to say to start, this represents 64 years of teaching at Pond Cove. It's a wealth of information and dedication. Um, I guess we're doing an alphabetical order. We have three M's to do tonight. Maybe they could each come up. We'll do them. Well, so why don't they come up? Rindy Martin. Martin Rindy. Julie Mullen. <laughs> and well, Charlotte Muserall. I think it'll make it easier to get through this, too. Martin Rindy, your MA. Um, besides Rindy's professional accomplishments, uh, Rindy has been a model of personal courage and inspiration to us all. I'll say that briefly because I know she doesn't want me to call attention to it. She's been a great colleague to everybody and a terrific team leader in the past. Um, if I could summarize Rindy's ability, she has an unpretentious ability to ask the questions and make the observations that went every, on everybody's minds but nobody dared to say. And I think I thank Rindy for that contribution among many others and I call her a realist. Mullen Julie, we're in the MUs. It's important in this, we call it academically driven system of ours to maintain our perspective and it was Julie Mullen's role at Pond Cove to remind us constantly that we are teaching young children. She advocated strongly on their behalf, and she made her teaching come alive that way. I know wouldn't, uh, Julie would not leave Pond Cove unless she were convinced that this message had been passed on to her successors and to a new generation of teachers. I think that's why she feels comfortable. Her legacy is secure. And Musrul Charlotte, the MU, I, a personal story, I vividly recall my first uh, formal supervision evaluation meeting with Charlotte. I had seen her around the building, been in her classroom, and I was impressed with her quiet demeanor and her, and her uh, competence and her cheery personality. But I had no idea until I talked to her about the depth of the expertise that Charlotte brought to the classroom. And after meeting with her and sitting there in stunned silence, I realized why. She was able to walk around with such quiet confidence. I have to add, too, that Charlotte uh, personally piloted a local assessment system project last year and this. And I think that's going a long way when you're about to retire. Um, just a teacher's perspective, I'm fond of quoting um, uh, just one part of a poem by Billy Collins, I think sums this up. Billy Collins writes, glancing over my shoulder at the past, I realize the number of students I've taught is enough to populate a small town. That's 65 years of teaching over there. I see it nestled in a paper landscape, chalk dust flying down in winter, nights dark as a blackboard. The population ages but never graduates. I can say from knowing these three teachers, uh, we'll probably all age together, but with their energy and their memories of Pond Cove, they'll never grow old. So on behalf of all of us in Pond Cove, we wish you well and we'll miss all three of you. Can I say, is that okay? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to say a few words if you'll allow me. I, I, um, both of my children were lucky enough to have two of the teachers standing up there. My, my daughter was so fortunate to have Julie Mullen in first grade. And if I could just share a very brief little story. Um, Lydia came home one day not soon after school had begun and um, insisted on putting in very large letters a big poster on her bedroom wall um, of the national anthem. And um, Julie had taught them that from the very beginning. Of course, I was thrilled that, number one, my daughter wanted to learn the national anthem. And, and I was really so thrilled, of course, that she wanted to please her teacher. But I think what really just made me 
store was to know that Julie had really inspired her to want to learn something like that. And that so exemplifies what Julie has done for her students over the years. Um, and I'm just, it's, we're going to miss you so much. And I know that she's just instilled that love of learning in all of her students throughout her many years at Pond Cove. Um, so thank you. And then I just have one other thing. <laughs> and my son was fortunate enough to have Charlotte in second grade. And I remember the monthly um, special, I can't remember what they were called, but there were monthly kind of special learning days that you organized. And um, all of his parents were kind of sort of fight over who would get to volunteer on those days because they were so much fun. There was so much energy. And Charlotte put so much attention and creativity and love into those days, as I know you did the rest of the year. But I just, those are the things that I remember so well from second grade. And um, the kids, of course, enjoyed them and looked forward to them, but all of us parents did as well. And that's the kind of energy and love that you brought to your classroom over the years. So thank you so much to both of you. If you would come forward, each of right. you. Rindy Martin. Can you Friendly a small token of our appreciation for this purpose. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. If Claire could come up, talk about our next retiree. Our next person is Jackie Petrillo. And Jackie, I ask to be the one to say something about you. Um, I'm standing here, and I, I'm hoping not to cry. Um, one of the things you need to know about Jackie is she is one of those special teachers not because she's a special education teacher, but because she is a special teacher. She really believes in what she does. She has compassion for students that come to school with many different strengths, but also some weaknesses. But that compassion not only goes to her students, but also to members of her team. And when I came to work in Cape Elizabeth, Jackie was the one who was there cheering me on the same way she does to her students. And she celebrates their gains and helps them to make sure they achieve those gains. And I can go on and on and on. She's a person who goes way above and beyond. But not only that, she's a person who has accepted some challenges when I needed a life skills teacher at the elementary school. I begged Jackie to consider taking that position. Now Jackie had been, had left teaching and it was working for us as an ed tech and we were stuck. We weren't finding somebody that had the caliber that Jackie would have presented to us as a teacher. And she accepted that challenge and wow, we hate to see her leave. Jackie, I'm sorry to see you up here tonight. Jackie is one of the teachers with which I have a, a relationship based around my son. 
Jackie inspired him when he was ready to give up. Her compassion, her pride in his energies pushed him through um, his sixth grade and got him on into another colleague of Jackie's who helped save his life in seventh and eighth grade. So I do know Jackie's great qualities. And not only that, Jackie, so many years ago, continued to follow my son's progress through middle school, through high school, through Iraq, through Afghanistan, and on to the birth of his and my first grandson. We have been friends outside of the school building, and I am terribly sad to see you go, Jackie. But it's nice to know I still have a good neighbor. Thank you, Kevin. I'm going to ask Ann if she would speak about our next recipient. And what's my honor to say um, a few words tonight about Nancy Hutton on behalf of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. And I know, Nancy, that you have been um, sort of Toasted and roasted, you've been given cakes and flowers and parties and dinners and all kinds of things. And um, there certainly isn't much more that I can say that hasn't already been said and so well deserved. Um, so I would just like to share a couple of my own personal memories, um, that uh, two of which I know are shared by probably all of the parents in our middle school community. Um, but the first, of course, is that the first time we met, which you probably don't remember because you've met so many of us parents, but you were standing out on a very cold, probably wet day in front of the middle school. And so for all of us that have had middle school students, we know that Nancy just stands out there without fail at the entrance greeting the students as they come in every single day. And um, I, had, I had never met you, and so I came up and introduced myself since I was uh, going to be having a, a student come into the fifth grade. And um, I said, gee, is there something special going on here that you're greeting all the kids? Because as a Pond Cove parent, I had not been outside at that time of the morning. And, and I, was just, I was just so amazed when, when she said with her cup of coffee in her hand, I'm here every day, and I'm thinking, really? Is that right? I can't believe that in this Maine weather that this... This, this principal stands out here, but true to fact, she is out there every single day. And I, I felt like I should almost get one of those like cardboard, you know, cutouts <laughs> and bring it so that we could, you know, put it out there once in a while. Because, I mean, what are these 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students going to do the first day of school when they don't see Nancy out there? And I know that Steve Conley will certainly start his own... Um, traditions and all those things, but um, that is certainly one of the indelible images um, that I, and I, as I know, many, many other parents have as well. The second is, um, I will forever think of you when I hear the term emerging adolescence. <laughs> um, <I've, laughs> I'm really, I'm quite sure that you coined that phrase. I, I don't think I... <laughs> I had never heard that um, before, uh, and and you know I think it you know needs to go down in some you know adolescent psychology book or something with your name on it, um, because you know we just hear that you are such a champion of these kids of the middle school student, and um, for us parents who of course get you know frustrated and struggle with the many different things that we have to struggle with our middle school kids. Um, you're always there to remind us that it's a phase and they're going to get through it and we're going to get through it. And you do it with such humor and with such a positive attitude that we all just really appreciate that. And the last I'll share is probably can't be shared with, with other parents, but um, it was about almost five years ago. Um, that I approached Nancy with this wild and crazy idea to have an all-day conference in the middle school, which became a year and a half later, um, the Wonder Years. And I just, it was probably the most exciting collaborative project I personally have ever been involved in. And it's because Nancy's leadership and her willingness to really be able to look at, you know, a whole new idea and take it to her staff and, um, 
involves so many people in the process. I mean, it took us, we did have struggles. Um, there were challenges. We had to work through the animals in the school business the first year and a number of other things like that. Um, but we did it and um, the kids loved it. And even though I think that you know, probably even up to the day before the conference, at least half the staff was probably thinking, what is she thinking? You know, what are we, what is tomorrow going to look like? Um, we've now had two of those. We'll have our third next year. But I just personally want to thank Nancy for her openness and her willingness and her, um, you know, creativity and, and just, you know, being able to sort of look at things from all different angles. It's a real gift, and um, you've given so much to our school and our students, and I'm sure to your staff, I can't speak for them, but certainly to the parents. And um, we'll miss you, and we'll think about you, but wish you well on your next journey. So thank you. <laughs> you didn't think you were going to get up here that quickly, did you? I did, Kevin. I thought I might make it. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. I'm going to turn this over to the rest of the board in a moment. Um, but I know Nancy as someone who has always held the interests of her students as the highest ideal in what she has done throughout her career. She's another person who inspired my son kept up with him, and is largely responsible for helping him getting where he is today. When Brendan came home from Afghanistan, he went over particularly to impress Ms. Hutton with the number of medals, stripes, ribbons that he had accumulated during his combat tour. And I believe he said to you, doesn't anyone around here ever retire? <laughs> His comment to you, his message to you tonight was, I didn't mean you. <laughs> Nancy, you're someone I have trusted, I've been able to go to, both as a parent and as a school board member. You have my implicit trust, my respect. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you, Kevin. Well, now you get to be a presenter. I know, I'm going to get to present. <laughs> and being a true middle school person, you know, those emerging adolescent people, I misunderstood the assignment. I'm the only person up here who doesn't have a written script. But I've stood here before you without a written script anyway, so I know I can do it. It's going to be um, my pleasure to help recognize two of our staff members who are also retiring. I believe, in alphabetical order, the first one is Nancy Scott. Now, Nancy retired actually in January, and I really sent her out there as, you know, what's this retirement thing all about? And she has called a couple of times and, you know, told me what you can use your time for and how you can relax and do things like that. She has also come back to substitute with us several times. Um, I'm not planning to do that, but that's um, <laughs> what Nancy has chosen to do. But Nancy has worked for the school system for a number of years, but I first really met her as a um, colleague 16 years ago. Nancy comes to us from our support staff, and for those of us who work in schools, we know that we just wouldn't be able to survive without our support staff. When I began as an administrator, as the assistant principal in Pond Cove, and I was housed at the intermediate unit, I worked with two colleagues in the office, Nancy Scott and Susan Robinson. Now, Nancy and I um, went out and we did bus duty in the afternoon at that time. The very first day of school was in the old complex before it was renovated. Um, the bell rang. It had been a great first day of school, really a lot of energy, and we had all these fourth and fifth graders. They just sort of swarmed out of the doors towards us, and Nancy and I were the only two adults out there by the buses that were all lined up. But we figured, not a problem. We can figure this out. They all came towards us, and they said, which bus is mine? Which bus is mine? And I, coming from seventh grade, very logically said, well, the same one that you rode on this morning. Which one was that? And about 25 of them looked at me and said, the yellow one. <laughs> and Nancy, being a true support team member person, 
came over and together we sort of figured it out along with Charlie Freeman, who used to be our transportation director, which yellow bus they all went home on. Um, I think that very first day solving that problem really sums up Nancy Scott's service to the Cape Elizabeth Middle School and to the school system. She has always been there to do whatever needed to be done to make sure that the day went well. Um, as a support person and as an ed tech one in our building, she has really helped the fifth and sixth grade teachers, our world language teachers, getting all the materials, all the supplies that they need to run their classrooms every day. Um, Joe Doan is still trying to figure out how he operates without her. Um, and I think before she retired in January, he had her run off at least five years worth of material. Um, so that he would be sure that he had it all. But Nancy came to school and comes to school every day now when she subs for us with a smile on her face, energy, and just willing to do whatever needs to be done to make sure that the teachers and the students have a great day. Nancy, it's been great working with you, and thank you for going out there and trying that retirement field for us out, because um, I know you've done well with that. Yes. <laughs> And now we go to Susie Van Wy, who in the true essence of being the teacher who works with emerging adolescents, always says exactly what's on her mind. So, and that has been refreshing, Susie, because you have brought to us ideas and thoughts that perhaps some of us wouldn't have dared to think or were dared to go. Anytime you walk in our middle school and people today walk through and they see our art displays, and they are amazed. They are amazed that students can do this work, but also amazed that we've been fortunate enough to work with an art teacher who is able to inspire young people to do this type of work. Even the students who would tell you, I'm not an artist. But in Susie Van Wy's classroom, they become an artist. And she takes them to different depths of learning that are amazing. Right off with assessment, Susie and I have been talking about assessment, student assessment and performance assessments for probably 10 years at least. And even in her artwork, she has really tried to get away to help them become reflective thinkers. And in a culture that isn't naturally reflective, but knowing the power of reflective thinking, she's really provided a great gift for our students, not only in the artwork that they do, but to think about why they chose the colors that they did, the medium that they did, the shading that they did, whatever it is, what about that really helped them express what they were thinking, what they wanted to portray to others. And Susie has done a fantastic job with that. Susie also is a person on our staff who very willingly steps forward to help people who are going through difficult times or who can't make a commitment. She has volunteered. I'll cover that dance for you. You don't find a lot of people who voluntarily at the last minute cover a 7th and 8th grade dance, um, but Susie does. I, I also understand, by the way, if you ever need this, she, has, um, she is a craftsman at creating shapes and different interesting things with cotton candy, which she recently did at our hoedown. Um, and to do that. And after another adult was having great difficulty with a cotton candy machine, I mean, now look, all the things you know about Susie Van Wy, would you imagine that she's a cotton candy connoisseur and she knows how to do all of this stuff? She, she can do it. She was great. Um, they had a great time. She's also stepped forward to very quickly substitute for colleagues who could not go to Chewankee. There's a place you'd never find me. But um, anyway, <laughs> Susie, <laughs> certainly not in an overnight adventure. Um, but Susie has gone forward and she has done that. So sometimes people think of Susie as this person, this wonderful art room and doing all these things. But she is so much more than that and um, brings all of that to her classes. Um, she's always sharing interesting articles with us and broadening our horizons. So, um, Susie, thank you for making the art experience at Cape Elizabeth Middle School so rich. I know we're going to miss you, um, but I know you're off to some wonderful adventures, too. Thank you. Can, can I add one thing about... I just have to um, comment. One thing that so impressed me about Ms. Van Wy is the fact that 
Um, I have two children at the middle school, and she knows them both. Um, one's a fifth grader, one's a seventh grader, and that is quite a feat, considering that she works with 600 students. The fact that she can know each of them and their little idiosyncrasies um, is just amazing to me. So thank you for all for just being special and being that dedicated a teacher, and good luck. And, and I would just like to say that some of the most, my most favorite art in my home came out of your classroom, Susie. So thanks. All right. Jeff, could you come forward? Well, Judy Liberty has worked in the high school for 20 years. Um, and it's my pleasure, she's seen many, many principals come and go at the high school. Um, <laughs> 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 um, and I guess so I'm the last. Um, <laughs> but she has been around and I, was, I, I uh, was just writing down just three words that sort of came to mind when I think about Judy Liberty just a second ago. And, the first one, without any question, the first word that came to mind is classy. Um, anybody who knows Judy knows that she is an absolutely class act. Um, the way she presents herself to adults, to students in her classes, um, in the activities that she does with kids, in her free time, it really is quite amazing. Um, and going along with that is certainly professional. Um, she is one of those teachers who sort of does, does the job the way it's meant to be done. Uh, does the little things right, from the nuisance things like getting grades in on time, uh, being at the duty station when they're supposed to be at the duty station. She does it all, and she does it apparently unflappably. I don't think I've ever seen her get upset. I've understood that it happened a couple of times, but, I, <laughs> but I've never witnessed it in times when I, I would have thought I would have, might have witnessed it. And she is a lady in the truest and best sense of the word. Um, she's just an amazing person to work with. Um, she also, I think, is a personification of the, the, the tightrope that teachers walk between being tough and being caring. And Judy has a reputation, I think, for being both of those. Um, and she's a personification of the fact that you can do both well and that if you do both well, you're just that much better a teacher. And I think all of the kids who've had Judy over the years would agree that she is tough, but she is caring and she knows them and she's tough for absolutely the right reasons and they will miss her. Um, Judy provided leadership to the, to the department. I'm not sure quite how many years, but she was department chair for more than a few, I think. <laughs> Um, and kept the department together, and as a result, I think largely because of her legacy and also because of David's, uh, the foreign language department is a very, very collegial and very, very closely working department, and I think that's a real legacy that Judy walks away from Cape Elizabeth High School knowing that it exists. Um, I will say about one specific thing, one of the annual events that is most looked forward to by students at the high school. I hope it continues. I hope you've bequeathed this responsibility to somebody else, Judy, um, is the French play, which comes at the end of the year, uh, where kids in her classes work on putting together skits that make fun of themselves, the administrators, other teachers in the school, just about everything, uh, but do it in a really, and it's just a perfect representation of what Judy is. The kids have fun. Um, it really is, it's videotaped, they just really have a, a ball and there's just endless laughter in there, but it is organized, it is crisp, it has a learning purpose and it contributes to uh, everybody being very clear that the kids uh, in Judy Liberty's class are learning. So Judy will walk out, um, as you will see when she walks up, small and physical presence, uh, but a huge presence um, and a huge impact and a huge loss that we will have but she has been a tremendously positive impact in the high school for 20 years. And I thank you, Judy, for your years of service.
Well, Bob thinks he's going to announce a break for some refreshments. I think not. <laughs> um, there's not enough room up here for all of us, so I have the honor of doing this on behalf of the board, and also I take great personal honor in doing this. You know, about this time last year, we were an organization in turmoil. We were coming to the close of um, a superintendent negotiation that had every possibility of going sour or well. And as we all know now, it went sour. We had a school board chair who was rushed to the hospital immediately following the last business meeting um, for an emergency appendectomy. And I made my last best decision as acting chairperson. And that was to reach out to Bob to come to Cape Elizabeth to, as our interim superintendent while we waited for our one year for our new superintendent to arrive. Bob sat down and speaking from my standpoint, I won't speak for Bob. I took an instant like to this man. What he said to me was, Kevin, I'm proud and pleased to be asked to join you, and I want to sit down and meet with you. And we did a few days later. And we left with a handshake agreement that I, of course, had not been able to bring to the board first, that he would be joining us as our new superintendent. And that may be one of the few things that I will ever publicly take credit for, for my nine plus years when I finally retire. Bob has been a gem, not an interim superintendent, but a superintendent. Our building project at Pond Cove is complete. Bob led that to completion, of course, with the able help of Elaine Maloney. We set off um, to continue to do some of the work we had begun before, and believe it or not, we are quite a well ways through policy, thanks to his work with Ann Belden. Bob was there as a calming force for us during a difficult budget period. But Bob, among all other things, and most important to me, always had my trust. And you'll find that trust is a commodity I value highly. So Bob, I'm going to miss you. Um, I'm going to miss working with you. I'm going to miss the 3 o'clock in the afternoon visits to find out what in the world is going on in Cape Elizabeth School District and what do I wish I didn't know about <laughs> and have Bob soothe me and calm my ruffled feathers and get us all together. Bob has been more than an interim superintendent. Um, he has in fact been a hero for us for the last year. This year could have been a disaster, but Bob was there. Um, for us throughout, putting out more than 100% in a job that typically doesn't require 100%. I'm pleased and honored to have worked with Bob. I will miss working with Bob. And we want to take this opportunity to recognize him. And we will begin, if I can find it, and not drop it, with a small token of our collective appreciation. The Cape Elizabeth School Board presents this to Robert Lyman in recognition of outstanding service to the students and community of Cape Elizabeth as interim superintendent, July 1st, 2004 to June 30th, 2005 by the school board. And just so Bob never gets to forget his precious moments with each and every one of us, it is signed by the entire school board this year. So Bob, you want to come down here and take this?
one, one thing. And we couldn't let Bob, of course, leave without at least a photograph of something. I'm not sure what, but Bob, I hope you'll enjoy that. And um, when you're done, I have two more that are not on the agenda. Okay. You, uh, you only wrapped eight. I know you only wrapped eight. I wrapped them before you got there this morning and did it. The things you don't know when you're running the office. Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, Cape's been a great place to be. You've been a great group to be with, you and you. Um, it's a community that is more together than apart. And though there are the little, little things that happen, it really is a together community, and it really is a great place to be, and it is a great place to work. So um, I hope you all continue to be the way you are, and I wish Alan my best because I think he can come in and uh, follow and just do the job that needs to be done. And thank you all. Now we have two quick presentations that were not on the agenda. And Mary, would you join me? And Pauline, would you join me up here? Okay. Mm. Mm. Nobody knows what goes on at a school board except for the school board and the superintendent. And I think these two, because we couldn't function without them. Mary is not only secretary to the superintendent, but secretary to all of us as well. And that's not too bad unless you have me as the chairperson. And she now has a small taste of what my wife has put up with for 30 years. <laughs> Pauline, magic lady, when it comes to numbers, I am an accountant. She is better than me. So I just thought that it was an appropriate time to say thank you. So well, except these on behalf of the board and myself. These bugs are for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being such a great board. It's been wonderful to work with you over the years. Thank you. I think I'm probably the only one in this room that was here when every single person who's retiring tonight came to the school. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm staying after you leave. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you from the board. I'm all of you, for all of you've done for the students and faculty and parents, the whole school community. I'm very grateful to have known all of you and worked with you, and I'll miss you all. Thank you. I'd like to take a very brief moment to close this with a line from a song by a singer-composer who I had a significant crush on when I was 18 and spent many hours chasing around the Schaefer concerts in uh, Central Park, New York with a candle in my hand. And the line from the song is, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Good luck, all of you. Now I invite you all to partake for the next 15 minutes or so, probably less than that. We're running long um, in some juice and refreshments. Thank you. There, 
there are some in, you know, where the kitchen is, underneath the, underneath on the right hand side. Thank you, Susie. Okay, thank you. Well, I hope we all have a grip on ourselves again. And we'll continue the meeting with the superintendent's report. Bob? Uh, yes, uh, just a few items. Um, in your packets, there was a uh, preliminary fall conference information packet, which included um, requests for topics, for clinic topics, call for resolutions, other things for the state board, um, the state um, school boards association. Um, hopefully you'll take a chance, to take a few minutes to look through that. Um, the second item in that packet was a, it was called the School Administrative Unit Progress on the Implementation of a Local Assessment System. I need to give all the thanks for this to Sarah Simmons. Um, she completed it. I think it was the best summary I've seen of where we are um, in each of the, the subject areas um, in the implementation of our our system. As you know, the commissioner is having um, groups come to visit school systems in the fall to see where they are, and I thought it was a, a good update for, for the board. A um, couple of other pieces. We have a uh, resignation um, from Holly Swenson. Um, okay. She writes, my teaching experience at Cape Elizabeth Middle School has been very rewarding. Therefore, it is with great sadness that I resigned from my position effective August 31st, 2005. I have decided it is necessary to devote my time to my new baby. And uh, so we will miss her. Um, and there are copies if people want those. Um, I wanted to share with you a letter um, to Jay Redinger who is a school construction specialist for the main department of education. Um, we had a notification um, uh, this past week that uh, he did not feel we qualified for school renovation and revolving <coughs> fund monies for the high school project. Um, and so the letter um, tries to, to uh, answer his concerns. Uh, so basically, it's an appeal um, to the Department of Education for um, to reconsider our request for those monies. And at the, your retreat, um, we talked about um, the book club. I think that's how we were referring to it. And uh, um, people reading a, a same volume. Um, we have received, as of two days ago, copies of the Effective School Boards, um, Effective School Boards by Eugene Smoley, and um, so that will be summer reading for everybody. And uh, Mr. Superintendent, <laughs> <laughs> you can lead the group next year. <laughs> And that's it, unless there are questions. Any questions, Bob? Seeing none, we'll move on to school reports. Um, beginning with the high school report, Jeff. Whoa. There's too many papers there, Jeff. Uh -oh. Uh, we actually have two part, a two-part report, but we're going to try to narrow it down considerably from what the original intent was in light of the time. Uh, but Angela Chapani, who is a Spanish teacher at the high school, has also done a wonderful job this year chairing our NEASC steering committee, which means um, she's in charge of the entire process. Um, she's in charge of running the meetings. She's in charge of making sure the reports get done by the faculty. She's in charge of being the, the gentle, and sometimes not so gentle when it's necessary, nag to the faculty to get things done. She's done a fabulous job. Um, 
And last, year, last month I reported to you about the sort of the timelines and asked you to put some things in the calendar. Since then, one, the last critical report uh, that we had to get done was done, so that whole writing process is now done, and Angela wanted to briefly report on that. And that's going to be then followed by David Peary, who's going to give a, just a, a short presentation about a technique that the Foreign Language Department has been using for the last several years in their uh, foreign language one and two classes. Uh, it's called total physical response storytelling. It's something that they, I've wanted to have them com to communicate to the board for the last couple of years, um, and so this this will be an opportunity. But we are going to sort of shorten that down a little bit. So Angela. Okay. okay. So for the past two years, uh, the high school faculty has been preparing itself for the NEASC visitation, our reaccreditation. And for those two years, we have been working on our self-study. And for that self-study, we've had to complete seven reports that Jeff mentioned. And it was a mission report, the two, three teaching standards, the curriculum instruction and assessment reports, the support standards, which are leadership, school resources, and community resources. All of those reports have been finished. And what Jeff has just passed out to you, you don't have the entire reports because some of them are up to 16 pages long. Um, what you do have is sort of the condensed version for each is the executive summary. Um, so you have, on the second page, you'll see that you have the mission and expectations for student learning and the executive summary, which pretty much condenses or summarizes the main points of each of the reports. And then following each executive summary, you have the list of the strengths and needs. Um, these strengths and needs were determined by uh, the committees themselves who did the investigating, who did the resource, research, and who created and wrote the reports. And they sat down as a committee and um, decided what were our strengths in that area and what were our weaknesses or needs in that area. So after all of the reports were completed, um, what we needed to do was do a final list of what we considered our critical strengths and needs as a school. And you'll see that on the front page. Um, we have it divided into the strengths, um, strong community parent and board support. Number two, committed, caring, educated professional staff dedicated to student academic success and personal well-being. Three, high achieving, hard working, respectful student body. Four, diverse extracurricular opportunities with widespread student participation. Five, rigorous, broad curriculum that requires student higher order thinking. Six, high quality of support for college planning and placement. Seven, library resources and staff that strongly support teachers and curriculum. Eight, common planning time for many departments. These strengths came from the seven reports. Um, you probably will not find them word for word in the reports uh, in their list of strengths and needs because we did um, change them a little bit, condense some, put some together, just um, made them more readable. Um, so it's a, it's a clearer, as you can see, some of the, in the original list of strengths and needs some of them are a bit wordy, um, so we wanted to make these uh, quite clear and, and readable. As far as needs, number one, improve the cleanliness of school and respect for school facilities. Number two, improve options for non-traditional and struggling students. Number three, develop and implement a more regular process of supervision and evaluation, especially for first and second year teachers. Number four, ensure more even access to technology. Number five, provide more opportunity for interdisciplinary planning and teaching. Number six, allow more time and attention to evaluation of curriculum. And number seven, provide more time and attention to implementation of the mission. Um, this list will be sent to the visiting committee. Uh, it's, it's their first snapshot of our school. And we think um, that it shows both our strengths and some areas that we would like to improve. Uh, this was voted on by the faculty. And that's where we are in terms of our self-study. We have completed that process. The next 
on our agenda for NIESC is we are working for the visitation, um, organizing everything, making sure we have all of the supplies, we're, we'll be scheduling things. Tomorrow we have to have our pictures taken because we have to put um, a board of all of our pictures so that when the visiting committee comes they can put names to faces and know who they're talking to. And all of this takes place October 16th through the 19th and you are all invited to join us. It is a rather interesting process as I've been on two visitations myself recently um, and it's something that I know I don't know if everyone's looking forward to it but I'm looking forward to it to see that all the hard work that we've done for the past two years um, finally comes to a conclusion. Uh, any questions that I can answer for you in terms of the NIASC work? Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Good evening, my name is David Peary. I'm a French teacher at the high school. Um, under the rubric of sharing exciting things that are going on with the school, um, I'm here to, you, uh, here to speak tonight about something that we've been working with in the Modern Language Department for the past four years. Um, the piece of paper I've just given you, the side I put up the three steps of TPR storytelling. Um, this is an overview of an approach that has been adopted by many of us. Um, over the past few years, in Spanish, it's been used in levels from one through five to varying extents. In French, it's been used in levels one and two in varying extents. Um, it's an approach to language teaching. Uh, it's an approach where we try to put language into a context that provides students with enough uh, repetition with the language and in, and in such an interesting manner that they are better able to retain the material that they learn and develop uh, their skills uh, much better. It's um, the TPR, the, did anyone do ALM when they were growing up? No. Um, it's an acronym. Um, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to anyone except for maybe um, a language teacher, but we refer to it as TPRS. And so I use that acronym and it's just one of those acronyms and that's its name. And, I can analyze it for you. Uh, this current name you see for teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling is something they kind of changed the acronym. It used to be called something else and they put new words in there. But what does it mean? Um, it's a very engaging method of learning language. It's trying to replicate how uh, we learn our original language, our first language, by putting everything that we learn into a context, by making it very comprehensible, uh, by making it as concrete as possible, giving us lots of opportunities to work with it so we internalize it and we can use it effectively. Um, it was piloted by Blaine Ray in the 80s, um, found that stories were a natural way to teach, to teach a language. Much, much the communication that takes place, we're telling a story to someone else. And story just a story develops a format, it's an easy formula to follow, and when you start teaching this formula, um, it allows you to work with the language so that a student can retain it. Uh, the, four the four pillars of this approach is that we need to make language comprehensible. So whenever we talk to students, whenever we're telling them a story, 90% of the material that's in the story they should know already. So they're not trying to figure out what the story's about, but it's very clear what's happening in the story. Secondly, we need to have a context. When we have a context for what we're talking about, it's easier to remember things. Often when you try to use mnemonic devices, you try to think of a context. How can I remember this word? The story becomes the context for them to remember um, the language they're working with. Uh, very important is repetition. I referred to ALM before, and if you, would, if you were victims of that approach to language learning, I'm sure, Kevin, you were a victim of ALM back in the 60s. Um, you've, you've, repressed, you've repressed that memory though, I think. Yes, I um, <laughs> Repetition was the key. It's, it's, it's been a, a, a key component of learning is repetition. 
and in all the psychological tests that have been done in learning, you need to repeat the returning, repeat the learning, repeat the learning, repeat the learning. But um, how do you how do you really? I mean, I could get you, I could teach you a French word and have you say it here. But if it weren't in a context, um, if it weren't comprehensible, the context that we we're talking about, you wouldn't retain the word. So we we try to give repetition in this context of comprehensibility. Um, Studies show that you need to use the word 60 times to retain it. So we need to figure out some way that we can provide intense use of the new language so that you get enough repetition with it so you uh, retain it. And finally, I could get you to repeat a word 60 times tonight, but it would be so boring it would just go away very quickly. So we try to make it as interesting as possible. So given those four pillars, that it's comprehensible, it's in a context, uh, we have enough repetitions for the student, and that it's interesting, um, students hopefully will retain better. And that is something that we have found. In the language that we are teaching our students, we have found that um, we have a higher retention rate of the material we've taught them. Um, they've internalized extremely sophisticated features of the language because of the context and because of the interests, because of the stories that we're telling. And, I and personally, I can speak of um, my own results of the past two years of using this approach. The students speak and write with a high degree of sophistication, a high degree of accuracy. Um, you learn what you do, whatever it is. If you learn to pound nails, you'll know how to pound nails. You may not know how to cut, cut wood to, to fit joints, but you know how to pound nails. Because we're having them repeat and repeat and tell these stories that they are interested in, um, they learn to express themselves very, very well. I've been working with, with level one students, and to hear them wax eloquently telling me 12, 13, 14 sentences for a first year student, that's just unheard of. But they become very comfortable with the language, and I've been very pleased with the type of success that we've had. Um, Paul Simon, the former senator, not the musician, um, from Ohio had a great quote. He said, when I went to Paris, I couldn't speak with anyone because no one spoke French too. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an attempt to get away from teaching French too, but teaching natural language, teaching language that people can use that they would normally use in everyday communication. Too often, um, language is taught because it's easy. We choose and curriculum are drawn up because this is easy to teach, this is what we teach, but it's not necessarily an easy thing to learn or not necessarily a highly communicative or useful thing to learn. But this approach that we've been working with, TPRS, TPR Storytelling, does teach language that is um, very natural and, and very useful. Uh, where do we hope to go with this? Um, We've been using uh, materials that have been put out by groups that are associated with, with this TPRS. Um, we found that with different people teaching it, sometimes we had divergent curricula, so we're trying to make our curriculum all converge. So we've, we've made an effort to try and take the materials that we have in place that the district has bought and to adapt those to the storytelling process. Um, this storytelling is used more exclusively in, exclusively in levels one and level two. It's used more for teaching vocabulary and preparation for reading texts text in level three, four, and five. Um, even the storytelling has been quite popular with the um, level five Spanish conversation uh, people. Um, so another thing we will look to do is to share our experiences. There is no one didactic way to, to teach this approach. Um, there are very many different ways, and if you looked at the different people in the high school who are um, using this approach, I think you'd find some variation. And so we hope next year to get some time to sit down and share our experiences, share the readings we've done, um, look at the research, and see how we can hone this um, to be a more successful approach for how we instruct our students. We're very excited about it. We're very excited about it because our students get excited about it. Um, they're very pleased with their progress. 
it can be somewhat repetitive, but they, they often look forward to the stories. And when I come into the class, they say, are we telling a story today? I say, yes. They said, did you write it or did the book write it? I say, well, I wrote it today. And then they got all excited because my stories tend to be sometimes bizarre and exaggerated. And they like that. And, and when I can get their attention and their interest, then maybe they hang around with me so that they'll say it 60 times during the course of several lessons so they will internalize the language that we've taught them um, when all is said and done. So that's where we are. I've tried to keep this short because Tom wanted to get home to catch the sixth inning of the Red Sox, and I'm trying to honor that request. Um, but I would be willing to take <laughs> questions, and we would be willing to come back at another time if you'd like a more um, in-depth presentation. Of course, you're always welcome to come by and see what we're doing. Drop me an email. I'd love to set up a chair for you in the back and you can watch it over a couple of days and, and see what's happening, uh, talk with students and get their reaction to it. But it's something that excites us and as been said many times, when a teacher is impassioned about what they're do doing, students become impassioned too. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, David. Thank you. Um, before we proceed with Susan Dana, um, I'd like to suggest an amendment to the order of business for tonight. Um, we have under new business consideration of approval for fundraising for upgraded lighting for the lower soccer field at the high school. I understand those individuals are here. Um, and I would like to insert that before committee reports. Okay. Kevin, that's there okay. are also people here, I believe, for the uh, consideration of a recommendation to shift funds for reading recovery. Um, so we may want to shift both of those. Okay. If nobody has an objection, we'll shift both of them to immediately before um, committee reports. And with that, we will take uh, the middle school principal's report. And F. Well, good evening. Susan and Lisa are going to come up and do the bulk of this, but um, I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to, um, since this is my last time to report to you as a middle school principal, to also thank all of you for being on the school board and working with you and knowing that you represent all the many board members that I've had the privilege of working with over 25 years. I come from a family in a small southern New Hampshire town um, deeply committed to community service. And one of the very first lessons we learned around our dinner table um, is how to answer the phone because my father, ever since I can remember what else he did, he was a town selectman and he was a town selectman for over 40 years of his life. And um, many times I learned very quickly that most people like to call people who are public officials who do volunteer type jobs such as yours right around the dinner time. And although a few of those calls are to thank you for your service and your wisdom, um, many of them are about other matters of highly emotionally charged um, issues for the whoever is calling. So, um, I have a little bit of a window of what you do, and I also come, well, my siblings are very involved um, as school board members, moderators of school meetings and town meetings, planning board members, um, all of those wonderful community things. So um, I am constantly treated to um, stories of life hasn't changed that much since dad was a selectman. But anyway, for each one of you and all of the boards that you represent, um, I do want to say thank you. Elaine, I will always associate you with the building committee and working through that and taking us through that process. Your work with Marie on that as we did facility committees and we did building committees and just going through a process very thoroughly um, and devoting many, many hours um, to a project that would get done sometime, we all knew, but we weren't always sure exactly when it would get done. So thank you for that perseverance. Henry, I think you represent um, to all of our students out there that people can be on school boards even if you don't have a sitting member um, in the school at that particular time. 
and that all throughout our lives we have things that we can back, give back to our communities. And it's just been such a pleasure uh, meeting with you um, and going to meetings with you over this past year. For those people who've never had the pleasure of working with Henry Adams, um, he's sharp as a tack and he has a wonderful sense of humor and also a great commitment to this town. So Henry, it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you very much. Kathy, um, I got to know, uh, first as a parent in the middle school, but then last year she came on the board. Um, I don't know if you recall, but the winter of 2004 was particularly cold. We didn't have a lot of snow, but it was very cold. Um, many winter mornings last year, Kathy would park her car after dropping her daughter off, come over and stand and talk to me while I greeted students in the morning. Um, so sometimes, Kathy, I noticed you were properly attired, and other times um, the scarf, mittens, and winter coat would have been a good thing to add. But um, <laughs> it certainly, as she got to know the middle school, as she got to know our system, and really becoming committed to um, being a very well-informed school board member. So, Kathy, it has been a pleasure to work with you. Trish, I always associate with you know, who comes to budget meetings? <laughs> Long before Trish Brigham was a school board member, she has attended budget meetings. I think ever since probably her son Peter was in kindergarten, she has come to budget meetings. And um, these were the Saturday meetings, the late evening meetings. Um, she came as a concerned <coughs> citizen and doing things. So it seemed very natural, Trish, when you finally decided to run for the school board and have a little bit different look and participation on all of those things. So I always remember that about you. And Trish, if you ever go to a meeting with Trish, uh, her arm has an electric thing on it. When so a job needs to be done and no one says anything, oh, I could do, I could help. Okay, I don't want to lead that, but I could help. I, I could help, I could help. And it just, it's automatic and she does it all, so it's great. And of course, um, you were very generous with your comments to me about doing the Wonder Years, but truly, that is an Ann Belden idea. And here's it. What a joy to work in a community where a parent comes in to your office and says, you know, I've been thinking. I have this idea. What do you think? And it was about a conference day for kids. As a middle school person, all I could think of, what could I get this woman to inspire? This is great. You know, do you need paper? Do you want a glass of water? Do you want to have my office? What, would you, what do you need to make this happen? Um, it was terrific. And as I talked to other people, not only within our own state, but across the region and even across the country, that idea that you brought to us is truly unique. And without your inspiration and the parent commitment to that idea, we never would have done it. So keep thinking of those great ideas because they make a difference. Kevin, long time um, we've worked together. Um, first met you as a parent um, and then um, as a school board member and helping us through some interesting times communicating <laughs> with the board at the time um, and looking at some issues and some things near and dear to my heart, although I would never go there in camp, but um, the, our outdoor experience programs and helping us really develop a process by which to look at that program and to look at did it belong in Cape Amiz Cape Elizabeth Middle School or not, and how can we expand it outward and to do that. Um, and certainly always associate you with remembering all of our students of all abilities and all the potential they have to make a difference. So it's certainly been a joy to work with all of you. Um, certainly agree with everything everybody said about Bob and Mary. Um, great to work with them um, as people who sit up there as well too. Um, and Bob, you're not an interim. You just happened to be the superintendent for one year. That was all. Um, I've worked with other interims and you did it very well. Um, <laughs> so, without making any other assessment. <laughs> just, just that statement. But certainly on behalf of everyone who works at the Cape Elizabeth Middle School, I want you to know that we realize being on the school board although it's a great honor, is also a tremendous responsibility. And we certainly respect all the time that you put in and all the effort you make um, for the good of the young people of Cape Elizabeth. So, and for me as an administrator, I have been blessed to work with all people who've worked on the board during my tenure and to know that even though we might not always agree, we always worked under the same umbrella, which is what is best for the youth of this community, and also with deep and abiding respect for everyone. So thank you. Now, my pleasure to introduce another team here that I greatly respect, um, our world language team. And they can be called foreign language, modern languages. We've got into this thing calling world language. And um, it's a program that the Cape Elizabeth School Boards have supported since the late 1980s, about 1986, 87, I think, bringing world language into a middle school for everyone 
not just for the people who didn't need to take any extra reading course, but for everyone, and then moving it down at least as far as the third grade. And tonight, um, Susan Dana and Lisa Leonard here are to share with you some wonderful results of that effort. So my pleasure to turn the microphone over to them. Uh, I'm Susan Dana, and I'm here representing the, uh, actually right now, just the Spanish teachers of the middle school. Um, and I'd like to announce the results of the 2005 National Spanish Exam. First, I'd just like to give you a little background about what the National Spanish Exam is. I think some of you have been on the board before, and maybe you know what it is, but for those of you that are new, I would like to give you um, background. Um, the National Spanish Exam was developed um, as a motivational extracurricular activity and contest for students of, I'm going to have to wear my glasses, for students um, of members of the Association of Teachers of Spanish and Portuguese, which is a professional organization to which we all belong in the middle school. The acronym is AATSP, so if I refer to AATSP from here on in, that's what I'm referring to. Um, the National Spanish Exam is a proficiency-based test of reading comprehension and listening comprehension designed for middle and senior high school students of Spanish. It is the most widely used test of Spanish in the United States. I only have statistic for 2004, but in 2004, over 104,400 students took the National Spanish Exam. That's from levels one up through level six. Um, a norm reference test developed using the National Standards for Foreign Language Education. The National Spanish Exam is used to determine student proficiency proficiency in middle school and high school Spanish courses. Its testing method is multiple choice and its scoring procedure is objective. Uh, the, the National Spanish Exam is standards-based and proficiency-oriented. There are 60 questions on the test. The students listen to a, a cassette tape, or actually a CD this year. Uh, 30 questions are just listening. They have no visual cues. They're just listening to the tape. And the other 30 questions are based on reading or, and writing. Um, and I'm just going to be announcing the results of the Spanish National Spanish Exam. And then in a minute, Lisa Leonard will talk about the National French Contest. Um, in, uh, in the middle school, this is also the first year, the, this year's eighth graders will be the class of 2009 at the high school, and they're the first group of students that started their study of Spanish in third grade. Remember the board a few years ago pushed the language back to third grade. The original plan for our FLUS program was to start in kindergarten, articulate the program all the way through, um, but we started in, in fourth grade, now we're working our way back. So this is the first group that started in, in third grade. Um, and I can just say personally, as a teacher, I've seen uh, a, uh, I don't want to say huge, uh, a difference in, in the ability of the students. Um, just that one year has made, made a difference. Our students do start in the third, fourth, and fifth grade. They have language instruction for 20 minutes for th uh, three days a week, so it's one hour a week. In sixth grade, they meet four times a week uh, for 30 minutes. And then in seventh and eighth grade, they meet for 45 minutes, five days a week. Our students this year, uh, actually for the last two or three years, have been taking uh, the level one exam, but they're now in a new category. It's an outside experience category because they are r really at an advantage because they've started in third grade. If you have a child, for example, from Bath Middle School who starts Spanish in seventh grade and we start in third grade, it's not really fair that they're, they're in the same division. So our students are in the outside experience division, uh, which makes it um, actually in a way a more difficult exam be for them or a division for them because in outside experience, especially when looking at the national norms they are competing with students from California, from Texas, from Florida, who hear Spanish a lot more in their communities. In Maine, we really, I think Maine is the only state that does not have Spanish on its public cable. Um, Alaska does, Vermont does. Um, and, and all those uh, opportunities to listen to language outside of the classroom really help the students. Um, so anyway, that's just kind of a, a background. I know it's been a long meeting. Um, so I just want to announce the results for the National Spanish Exam in Maine. Um, uh, Michael Tainter, who's in eighth grade, these are all going to be eighth grade students in the outside experience category. Michael Tainter placed first in the state of Maine, seventh in the United States. Olivia Earnshaw placed second in Maine, ninth, uh, ranked ninth, ninth nationally in the United States. Una Donegan and Matias Shimada placed third in the state of Maine, tenth in the United States. And I should, have to, I should clarify, there are 60 questions on the test, so if someone earns the same score, which happened with Una and Matias, then they both place, that's why they both place third in Maine, because they, they earn the same score, so there are going to be quite a few. Um, Emily Richardson and Grace Stack placed fourth in Maine. Jonathan Aronson, Gabrielle Loring, and Kathleen Mitchell placed fifth in the state of Maine. Laura Hayes, Katie Moles, Rachel Muscat, and Caitlin Pomeroy placed sixth in Maine. Kayla Munson, Evan Nagel, Megan Smith, Rosie Wenberg placed seventh in the state of Maine. Will Dennison, Sarah Friedman, Morgan Mancall, Stephen Janik, Katie Takash placed eighth in the state of Maine. 
Lisa Kaplan, David Luongo, Susan Tuttle, Tim Williamson, and Sam Yates placed ninth in the state of Maine. Shelby Downer, Seth Hansen, Hannah Johnson, Rosie Hewitt, and Molly Powell placed 10th in the state of Maine. So those are the, are the top 10 in the state of Maine, and I think Cape Elizabeth Middle School, did, our students did very well. Um, well. I also would just like to announce the other students who placed um, for, in rank from 11th to 19th, just to recognize the students that took the test. Usually it's your top 10 or 15% that are selected to take the exam. Uh, Kelly Murphy, Kristen Faulkner, Brad Page, Tricia Thibodeau, Ross Phillips, Emily McDuffie, Margaret Rich, Marissa Barrett, Stephanie LaSure, Nora Daly, and Shay Watson. Um, so I would just like to th uh, also just take a quick moment to thank Nancy Hutton, who's been very supportive of our world language team um, since it was implemented in, in 1988. And also thank you very much to the board and the parents and the community, which has been very supportive of our word, world language program, which really is quite unique in the state of Maine, at least. Thank you. I would like now to introduce Lisa Leonard, who's going to talk more briefly than I about the French contest. Thank you, yes. Hi, I'm Lisa Leonard, and I'm here to report on the results from the National French Contest. It's very similar to what Susan described for the uh, National Spanish exam. Of course, it is in French. Um, but we, a um, little bit different from Susan's group, this, the group that took the test is called the non plus group. These are the students that switched from Spanish into French in seventh grade. So this is their second year of taking French. They have it all the, you know, every day. Um, so they do compete in the category of one or more years, so they don't have a special, you know, two-year category, you know, just started category. Um, we were very pleased with the results. We had one student who ranked nationally 11th. Her name is Michelle Munger. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We had three who placed in the top 10 in the state of Maine. Michelle Munger, 9th. Kathy Wise, 10th. Leah Fisher is 10th also. And then we had um, two more who placed in the top 15 in the state of Maine. Laura Steinroder who placed 13th, and Annie Johnson placed 14th. So we were very happy with those results. And now, um, back to David Perry, he will report on the high school results for the National French Contest. You're so patient, thank you very much. Um, high school results on the National uh, Association of Teachers of French and the National Association of Teachers of Port Portuguese and Spanish um, get some very, very nice results this year. Um, in level two in French, Kelsey Spratt was sixth and Shannon Lyons was eighth. They were eighth, sixth and eighth in the state. In level three, Charles Gouvernali was ninth, as was Ashley Robinson, ninth in the state. And in level five, Aaron Samenfeld Speck and Dana Riker were, um, Aaron was second in the state and Dana was eighth in the state. A uh, particular note, two students who did very, very well in this test. In level five, Liz Mishu uh, was first in the state and 10th in the nation for level five, the highest level of the test. And in level three, Liz Cummings, a freshman, was first in the state and fifth in the nation on the level three of this test. Um, on the Spanish side, in level one, uh, Derek Shaw was seventh in the state. Alicia Sioka was ninth in the state. In level three, Claire Stack was eighth in the state. And in level five, um, Sonia Medina's uh, Spanish sixth class takes the level five test, and um, they placed uh, second through seventh in the state. Um, Christine Katzos was third, Ali Milsack was third, Anna Moyer was third, Kaylee Skopinski was fourth, Corinne Earnshaw was fifth, Danielle Beaumont was sixth, and Beth Roy was seventh. The number one position in that state was taken by Claire Egan. Um, she was also, where's my note here? She was 12th in the nation. Um, a special recognition um, in this group, we had Abby Greslick, who took the National Association um, teaches a French test in level one, and she took the National Spanish test in level five. She was, she was eighth place in the state in level one in French, and she was second place in the state in level five in Spanish. And Olivia Conglin Weil probably is the, the one of the great linguists of the high school in the current moment. Um, she took the level one French test, and she placed 11th. She took the level four Spanish test, and she placed eighth. These are in the state. And she took the level one Latin test, and she had a perfect score of 40 out of 40 to earn a gold medal in that. 
Um, we're very pleased with everyone's effort, and thank you very much for your support. Thank you, David. We're now going to move on to item 12A, consideration of approval for fundraising for upgraded lighting for the lower soccer field at the high school. Gentlemen, I apologize. I was not aware that you were here to make a presentation. My name is Jim Croft, and I'm here with Doug Courier, and we're uh, acting as spokespeople um, for this proposal for the lighting upgrade for the uh, Cape Elizabeth High School, uh, the lower athletic field, which, as you are probably well aware, in the uh, current renovation of the high school, uh, the lower athletic fields have been expanded um, to be able to accommodate regulation size sporting events um, the current situation is that the plan, as it now stands, would be to um, keep the current lighting that's there, um, which has eight poles, expanded to ten because of the expansion of the field. Unfortunately, that would still continue us with what is known as 30 candles of, of light for those activities. Um, that's less than the standard 50 that we would need to be able to hold um, sanctioned varsity events on those fields. What we're proposing is that we replace those 10 poles that are currently wooden and have a, uh, a shortened lifespan with four steel poles. Um, we have done research on similar projects in the uh, southern Maine area. Uh, the company that seems to be doing all that work is a company called Musco. Um, They've done all the ones in southern Maine, and they've currently, in this current year, uh, completed 60 projects throughout New England. Um, we've met with them, um, and they have, are, uh, are putting together some uh, proposal work for us currently. Um, in terms of uh, the, the financing and, and cost of this project, um, we're anticipating that the cost will come in somewhere between 90000 and 140000 um, depending upon whether we're, we're able to utilize the services of the um, Maine National Guard. Um, we're looking at, at a five-year financing arrangement that um, we have a number of sources listed here that we would be able to um, utilize. Um, and if we were able to use, utilize the services of the Maine National Guard, it would considerably reduce the, the expense that we would need to raise. Um, by doing this, we would be able to host athletic events in the evening, which would uh, allow more parents to be able to, to uh, witness the activities of their children. The lighting would provide for a, a safer playing surface. Uh, it is projected that the new lights would be much more energy efficient. Um, in terms of not only using less energy, but they would also have a longer lifespan. Um, and by the way that the lights would be able to be positioned, um, they would be focused more on the field and, and there would be less uh, drifting of light to uh, adjoining areas. Um, and it would allow our, our sports teams to be able to uh, have the ability to practice later in the fall, when, when uh, natural light becomes scarce, it would allow us to be able to have sort of pre-game conditions when we travel to um, other towns for evening sports events, in addition to allowing us to hold our own events here. Uh, and by doing that, we think that that would increase the uh, school spirit and provide uh, additional venues for activities for weekend events that the uh, kids currently don't uh, enjoy. Um, tonight we're, we're just simply here to let you know 
about the current intent of this committee. Uh, we'd like to receive confirmation that the uh, school board also shares in our interest in having us pursue this um, with the understanding that a formal <coughs> proposal must be presented and approved by the school board at a later date. And um, if we, with this confirmation, we, we would like to uh, secure a formal proposal from Moscow to purchase the lighting system and begin the process of working with the National Guard and or other independent contractors uh, to arrange for the installation, uh, proceed with developing and implementing our fundraising and financing plan um, and determining what else we would need to secure uh, in terms of necessary approvals by the town, from the town or the planning board, et cetera. And to get your impact, uh, your thoughts your, and any questions or concerns that you might have. Questions, comments? Well, I, I appreciate your efforts and the efforts of your committee. I think it's great to see a group um, take the time and put the energy into something like this. Right. Yeah, I just want to thank you for uh, pursuing this. Um, I think you probably are all aware that at some point the school board and the building facilities committees looked at the proposal to have lights on there, and it was something that was in our original proposals that we had to back away from. So, um, uh, because of the costs, and um, for that very reason, we were hoping that a group would come forward. <laughs> so, thank you for doing the work, um, and I wish you a lot of luck in, in raising the money and getting the support from the rest of the community. Anyone else? I'd like to suggest that you approach item D as quickly as possible. Uh, which is uh, what you need to do to secure necessary approvals from the town planning board, etc. That is my single biggest concern every time this issue has come up is that that hasn't happened first. Um, other than that, I certainly uh, appreciate and support your efforts, but I don't want us to get down the road and discover that we are... Uh, unable, we and you are unable to uh, do anything without uh, approvals that might or might not come. I, I don't know that it's a done deal. But other than that, you know, I, I certainly am interested in seeing this happen. Let me also suggest that you um, have conversations right away with uh, the town planner. Um, uh, I've talked with Maureen. Um, there are, you know, ways that uh, the neighbors are brought into the process early and uh, become part of it, and there are ways when it becomes real contentious. So um, I just urge you to do that. But thank you for, for your work. Do, I, do we need to vote on this? I think so. They're asking for permission to fundraise. Can I have a motion to that effect? Blaine. I move that the school board uh, approve the efforts of uh, the, um, I'm not sure if they have a committee name, but we'll, <laughs> we'll call it the, uh, a fundraising group for lights on our high school field um, with a report back to the school board and at whatever time is deemed necessary. Second it. To second, Henry. Any other discussion or comment? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? 6 0. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll now move on to item 12 F consideration of a recommendation to shift funds for reading recovery. $30,300 from contingency funds for the 2005-06 budget. Um, the quick background on this, uh, hopefully to move it along, is that the federal funds that fully funded this program were reduced um, to the tune of $30,300. We have uh, examined 
other ways of raising these funds. We have examined other ways of trimming budget items to raise these funds and thoroughly questioned our financial people as to what opportunities there were to um, make sure that this program stayed in place. I do believe there's a consensus of the board that it is important to con continue this program at the current level. Uh, with that information, I'm going to break precedent and move that we transfer $30,300 from the contingency fund to next year's budget for reading recovery in order to save this program while we explore other opportunities. Do I have a second? Lane? Comments or questions? I'm all for it. In that case, all in favor? 6-0. I'd like to point out to the public and to our audience that this is a clear indication of how tight our budget is next year when we have to hit contingency before the year has even begun in order to save a program that intervenes with our most vulnerable of students. And I will leave my editorial comment at that for now. With that, we're going to move back to uh, Agenda item 10, committee reports, and begin with the Finance Committee. Kathy? The Finance Committee met this evening at, I guess, 7 o'clock, quarter of 7, um, where we signed warrants. Um, we reviewed uh, non-classified employee salary and benefits, which um, we'll talk about later. Um, Colleen gave us um, a report on the usage of facilities rental funds. Um, and basically uh, broke down that the usage of building, building rental revenues um, netted out to $15,944, um, which is uh, used to offset custodial costs for 2005-2006. Uh, uh, we reviewed the Food Service Task Force report. Mm -hmm. uh, the Basic uh, change between April and May. April, we had negative student accounts totaling $8,296. May, we had negative student accounts totaling $8,201. So we have moved um, a little bit more into the um, um, positive. We are continuing to monitor that and looking at other possible options for collecting uh, past due accounts. We have accounts that are currently out uh, to a collection agency um, and they are uh, starting to uh, send us monies, uh, although some of these accounts are fairly old. Um, and we also discussed um, that for the fall we may uh, change when the finance committee meets and um, the makeup of um, the finance committee of a committee of three versus a committee of seven. Um, and unless I'm missing something, I think that was about it. Uh, only that we completed the executive session that was going to be held after the school board meeting at that time as well. Okay. Thank you. Policy subcommittee in. The policy committee met on June 7th. Um, we discussed just a couple of policies, policy IKB, which is homework we discussed in great detail. Um, what we've, uh, where we are now is that um, a draft was presented, we made some changes to that, and the administrators will be taking that to their respective staffs in the fall, in the early fall, for input and feedback on that, and then it will become back to the policy committee. We also discussed policy ICAA, which is religion in the schools, um, and that will be presented later this evening for first reading. And finally, we discussed um, post-secondary enrollment options, which is a policy we've already reviewed and needed to have one paragraph added, which Jeff drafted and presented, and that will be presented for first reading later this evening as well. 
UN. Trish, communications. Am I reporting on this document or? Um, no, I think that's a separate piece of business. Okay, the, business. The, the communication committee um, has not met since the last meeting. Okay. Elaine, negotiations? Um, yes, um, the negotiations committee uh, met three times with the administrators since our last uh, business meeting. Uh, we have presented a proposal at the executive session this evening, um, and we will be meeting with the um, administrators on Thursday, June 16th. Might as well keep it on, <clears throat> Elaine. Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. Yeah, um, a lot has been happening with the Education Foundation. Since our last meeting, their board of directors had uh, an approval of a, a slate of teacher grants. Um, at the high school, uh, they will be uh, um, having two writers in residence um, as part of one of the grant proposals. There will also be a jazz performance residency, uh, Spanish dance instruction, and then a full funding of a robotics team at the high school. At the middle school, the Education Foundation uh, has donated some money in regards to uh, um, augmenting our video conferencing program that is uh, being stepped up next year. And as far as Pond Cove, they received um, some more laptops to help out the grant that the PCPA had started uh, so that they would have complete carts for the classrooms. They also uh, have bought some equipment for some of the younger students for, um, uh, they're actually chairs that help them concentrate on the task at hand. Um, they also have a, a, a rather large grant to a, a new teacher induction program that will be um, supporting some teacher release time because of the number of new teachers that we have coming into the school. This is a proposal by Kelly Hassan. So as you can see, the teacher grants uh, were a major portion of um, the things that we'll see this fall. Uh, in addition, they also, as you know, uh, awarded the um, High School Achievement Center $50,000 in the term of, in the scope of their large impact grants. And they have just recently released a uh, deadline for another round of grants strictly for professional development. And they will be looking to um, get some proposals from the staff uh, this fall. The, as you know, the school department had to look at um, a plan B for laptops at the high school. And uh, we had put in a request to the foundation uh, at the encouragement of SAFE. And at this point, uh, the, their board of directors gave unanimous support. And I believe last night they met. Um, I'm hoping that the rest of the board supported it. But they will be uh, funding about $25,000 worth of further laptops to help us complete uh, full carts um, for all the departments at the high school so that all of our students can be exposed to laptops grade 9 through 12. Um, and lastly, just as far as um, the Education Foundation is finalizing a case statement because they're entering into their capital campaign this summer, um, they are working with a fundraising consultant, um, and they're really striving to it's now start to establish a permanent endowment, um, which will um, ensure the long-term uh, existence of this type of money for our schools. So uh, they've been very busy, and we are very grateful <laughs> for the help that they have given our school systems and the collaborative nature in which they've been working with our district leadership team and um, the school board and our administration. Comprehensive, comprehensive plan. plan. Um, the Comprehensive Planning Committee, they met for the first time on uh, June 2nd. Um, just so that you guys are aware, Barbara Schenkel from the Planning Board is the chair. We'll be meeting this uh, Thursday, January 16th. Um, a little bit of background on it. The general feeling is that the current plan, which was done in 1990 to 1993, is a pretty solid plan that we won't be spending a, an inordinate amount of time because we're not reinventing the wheel, but that it will, we anticipate it being an 18-month project. We will be meeting every month. Um, they will be sending a, sur a survey to the community in the fall. 
um, we will be holding two public forums. We also voted to employ the um, Greater Portland Council of Government, who will be doing the data analysis uh, for, for us to use starting in September. And I think as far as school board members are concerned, while this comprehensive plan are, are generally used for guiding land use in the town, uh, it can directly affect our schools through budgeting times when choices have to be made. And it really is the utilization of resources and how the community uh, wants to prioritize them. So um, any time that you know, anyone on the school board has any thoughts regarding that, I know I've asked you for some help on some questions on the survey, and I would encourage the public um, to follow our reports, um, to attend our forums, and, and share your thoughts with us um, uh, through that committee, whether it be emails or um, picking up the phone, so, or attending our meetings. So that's just the beginning of that process. Athletic Advisory Committee? <laughs> um, we're going to be meeting on uh, tomorrow, the 15th, uh, at 4 o'clock in the library. It is a public meeting. We're going to be discussing uh, sports done right, and we'll be looking to bring back some sort of model, I'm hoping, uh, to the school board so that I know we had requested that we um, look to do something with the community. So there'll be the discussion of that. Um, they're looking to update some potential new programs. Um, we've looked at this before, but we'll be hearing some updates regarding uh, girls ice hockey, um, middle school football, and alpine skiing. It's just a discussion. Anyone has any input, welcome to come or share it with me and um, go from there. Lane, um, before you continue, which library? I'm sorry? Which library is that meeting being held in? Which library? Building committee. Um, at the request of the um, of Bob Lyman, um, we had a meeting of the school building committee on June 8th, um, and uh, you should be getting the meeting minutes any day now. But what we were looking to do was to come up with a recommendation for the remaining $130,000 that was left over from the Pond Cove building project. And um, I am really pleased to, to share with you that the building committee had a unanimous decision to, to recommend that that remaining money be uh, moved over to the high school renovation project. I think one of the members said, I see no reason why we shouldn't reward good management. And for that, I thank Bob Lyman and Pauline and Ernie McVeigh and Langford and Lowe. Um, so that recommendation has gone forward along with the letter to the town councilors asking for um, consideration at their July meeting. We've also invited the town councilors um, on their, at their July meeting, which I believe is July 11th, to attend a tour of the high school at 445, where they can see some of the items that we will be able to address with this money that we might not otherwise be able to uh, address. So um, that's where they are. ready to move on to unfinished business, but before I do, does anybody need to call home? <laughs> I guess not. Okay, number 11, consideration of communication committee vision and goals. What I'd like to do is <coughs> open this with a motion, mm. second, and then get into discussion if necessary. So can I have a motion on this? Um, I'd like to move that the board accept, adopt um, the vision and goal statement prepared or submitted um, to the board by the communications committee. Do we have a second? Thank you, Elaine. Questions, comments, etc. I could just add one change. Um, the um, after the revision was the initial revision was made, we put this out to the uh, DLT. And uh, there was some feedback, I think it was from Jeff, about uh, was this, did this mean that we had to do, all schools had to do weekly emails and newsletters, and that was not the intent at all. Mm -hmm. And just before Rebecca left, um, she changed the wording. If you go to the second page, where it said, used to say weekly email and newsletter exchange between schools and with board members. 
it would now read email and newsletter exchange between schools and with board members. In other words, monthly planner, parent association letters, et cetera. It is not intended to be additional work. It simply is, was designed to say that those are things that happen and, you know, would be encouraged to continue to happen. That was the only change that I had. Any other questions or comments? How do we, how do we amend the motion? Uh, just amend it as read or as submitted because I do have it in writing. Okay. Trish, would you amend your motion? <laughs> do I read? To, no, just to, to, in, to incorporate the changes as stated. Uh, so moved. <laughs> <laughs> A second. <laughs> All in favor? Six zero. On to new business. Um, consideration of superintendent's recommendation for athletic fee positions for fall 2005. Bob? Yeah. Um, I'll go through these as quickly as I can. Um, we do have some additions um, because we, they kept coming in as we were getting closer to this meeting. Um, first, in, in uh, fall coaching recommendations, we have Charlie Carroll, Varsity Boys Soccer, Ben Raymond, Assistant Boys Soccer, Gary Newell, JV Boys Soccer, Don Burke, Freshman Boys Soccer, Dean Brooks, Varsity Girls Soccer, Mark Tinkham, Assistant Girls Soccer, David Weatherby, Boys Cross Country, Mary Ann Doss, Girls Cross Country, Aaron Filio, Varsity Football, um, five Assistant Football uh, Coaches, Ron Kierstead, Arthur Jones, Don Young, Tim Wiley, and Tim Lawson, Lori Broadhurst, Varsity Field Hockey, Caitlin Martin, JV Field Hockey, Greg Sandell, go, um, Golf Co-Coach, and Eric Lutz, Golf Co-Coach. Co they are sharing that uh, position. Um, and Elena Zacco, JV Girls Soccer, um, we also have, oh, just um, let me continue and I'll answer questions afterward. Um, Pond Cove nominations for co-curricular, we had kindergarten, Catherine Cornell, grade one, Karen Abbott, grade two, uh, these were the teacher leader, grade two, Sarah Lewis, grade three, Mary Dulock, grade four, Sue Welch, pupil services team, Susie Safer, and allied arts, Marie Hayes. Um, at the middle school, um, Allied Art Facilitator Andrew Strout, Grade 5 Team Leader Kathleen Walsh, Grade 6 Team Leader Gary Record, Grade 7 Team Leader Aaron Filio, Grade 8 Team Leader Mary Murphy, uh, Special Education Team Leader Kim Huchel, um, World Language Team Leader Susan Dana, Video Conference Coordinator Holly Smivok, and um, uh, middle school representative to teacher certification, Mary Murphy. Also at the <coughs> middle school, band director, grades five to eight, Terry White, world director, <coughs> grades five to eight, Rebecca Bean, outdoor experience, grade five, Kathy Walsh, grade six, Gary Record, grade seven, uh, Joanne Parquette, grade eight, Mary Murphy, speech, grades five through eight, Margaret Welch, Student Voice, Pam Vos and Deborah Hannon. Uh, yearbook, grades five through eight, Kathy Clow. Co-curricular fee positions, uh, also at the middle school, Civil Rights Team Advisor, Bill Cook. Variety Show Director, Tom Wilbur. Stipend nominations for Cape Elizabeth High School, uh, SAC, Dwight Eli and Tony Gigoni, Gidoni, sorry. Uh, math team, Roger Rio and Tony Gidoni. Uh, book talk, Joyce Bell. Jazz band, Tom Wazot. Uh, Bartleby, literary, literary magazine, Karen Lamb and Erica Kent. Gay Straight Alliance, Karen Lamb, Bill Cook. Natural Helpers, Andrea Kayer, Katie Lisa. Senior Class Advisor, Gretchen McNulty. 
junior class advisor, Kerry Curtis and Courtney Farrell, mock trial, Mary Page, speech coach, Gretchen McNulty, assistant speech and debate, Kevin McNulty, yearbook, Rachel Guthrie, drama performance, fall, Dick Mullen, drama performance, spring, Dick Mullen, theater class productions, Dick Mullen, theater management, Dick Mullen, department chairs, science, Doug Worthley, uh, math, Elaine Brownell, foreign language, Angela Schipani, social studies, Gretchen McNulty, technology, Betsy <coughs> Nilsson, visual and performing arts, Tom Lazat and Mary Hart, special education, Ben Raymond. These were not in your package. Um, Student assistant stipend positions from the middle school, Kim Sturgeon, coordinator of the SAT, and uh, Sally Connolly, grade five representative, Mary Beth Benoit, grade six representative, Deborah Casey, grade seven representative, this is on the SAT, the student assistance team, um, Mary Murphy, grade eight representative, Carly Bean, special education representative, Rick Madden, guidance counselor, Julie Salikas, school nurse, and Mary Schmaha, Instructional Support Program. And, sorry, one more. <laughs> um, the system-wide certification committee, high school representative Joyce Bell, middle school representative Mary Murphy, Pond Cove representative Mary Dulock, at-large representative Shari Robinson, and webmaster for the school website, Wendy Dershowitz. So those, again, were not in your packet, the last two sheets. And I think that's all of them. Can I have a motion? Wayne. I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for all those positions. Second. Patricia. Just questions or comments? Just one quick response. I had, had a question about how come football hours were more than soccer and it's because it's the season is two weeks longer and um, golf um, they the two are splitting the one fee other questions comments seeing none all in favor six zero move on to um, Nomination for Achievement Center Coordinator. Yes, in your packet, um, there was information on Ginger Raspiller. Uh, Ginger has worked for us in the technology department. And um, Jeff, I don't know if you just want to quickly cover the reasons for her being selected. Very quickly, yeah, Ginger's worked in the technology department the last year. She's been headquartered in the high school. She has the tremendous respect of the high school staff universally and students. Um, um, she actually has been involved in her past in organizing some tutoring experiences in a tutoring system in another school. Um, she's a very, very good teacher. Uh, she's a very, very good tutor and trainer and a very organized and detailed person. She's going to do a great job. Very excited. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. Also in your packet was a job description that had been um, worked out, uh, first uh, drafted by Jeff, uh, worked out between Pauline and Mary and the Department of Education and some other people to uh, um, get it to where we wanted to get it. So um, that was in there as well. Do we need to adopt that, Bob? Uh, we probably should, along with the job, along with the uh, hiring because this is the first person in that position. I'll take two motions. First motion to accept the job description as supplied. So, so moved. Thank you. Henry, second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Opposed? 6-0. And now um, I will take a motion to uh, to approve the superintendent's nomination for the position. So moved. Thank you. Second. Conversation. Question. 
All in favor? 6-0. Moving on. Uh, consideration of two teachers' requests for 0.5 unpaid leave of absence for the 2005-06 school year. Um, before you make a motion on this, it is one teacher. We had originally had anticipated two, and there was only one. Okay. Motion. I move that we approve the um, superintendent's request for half paid on the half unpaid leave of absence for one teacher. Second. Shouldn't we name the teacher? Should we name, name it. Or for Second. Thank you. Name the teacher. Yeah, it is for Therese Roberts. Okay. All in favor? A question. Yes. Yes. Um, do we have the ability to fill the other portion of that? Um, yes. Um, that was one of the first questions that we ask when these things come up. And um, uh, there has been a reshuffling of people uh, at the eighth grade. I think it's particularly at the eighth grade level. Well, it, it, it's, yeah. it involves more than that, but quick. But um, the one that was the other one that was withdrawn is because we had anticipated we were going to get a request from Holly Swenson. So we had already put out an ad for that anticipated um, one for childcare, and then Holly made the decision to step aside and to resign. So. Uh, we have that ad out. We have a pool of candidates, um, small but very highly qualified candidates to do that. So I think it is something um, that we will be able to fill rather quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Kathy? Any other questions? All in favor? Opposed? 6-0. Okay, we already did F, did we? Yeah, G, consideration of athletic trip request. And give us a down. Uh, yeah, this was a uh, boys soccer, uh, playing a soccer tournament on August 26th and 27th in Cromwell, Connecticut. This is an annual thing, isn't it, Jeff? Okay. I recall hearing of this before. Um, motion, please. Elaine, thank you. Second. Trish, any questions? Trish? Just a real quick one. Are there liability issues when we have parent drivers, when we cross the state lines? This is just for my own edification. Good question. Good question. Sue, has that come up before? I think what they Thank you. Question, what about insurance ramifications? Did that? I probably can help us with this one. I believe the parents that are driving have to present um, their driver's license and their insurance to the business manager prior to the trip. Yeah. 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 Any questions, other questions? All in favor? Six zero. G H. Consideration of policies for first reading. Anne. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what we want to do here. <laughs> this is going to be painful. There are thirty policies. <laughs> Um, I was planning. For at home, there are 81 pages of. Yeah, I mean, I was planning for anybody who's still watching. Um, <laughs> I was going to read all the titles of all 30 policies so that people knew what we were talking about. But, you know, I'm not sure. Do you, Bob, do you think I still need to do that? <laughs> I think <laughs> that in view of the time, we should ask Mary to. 
prepare a summary list of the I policies. No. Okay, no. no. I mean, we, we still want to have a quick first. I just wasn't going to read them all the Exactly. Names. Can I finish? Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to be published on the website and to be incorporated into the minutes of this. And we will also incorporate that list of policies by reference for the second reading. And with that, Ann, if you'd like to make a motion. A motion for what? Oh, we don't need a motion. It's the first reading. I'm sorry. End of the eye policy okay, issue. So, so what, I, what I'd like to do is just, you know, have a quick first reading first on the B policies. There are four B policies. Are there any comments or questions on any of those? Yeah, well, there's a typographical error. Yeah, there's a couple of typos, and we'll pick okay. those up. Any questions or concerns regarding the... I, I have a question on uh, BDB. Uh, okay, that's for, board officers. Uh, yeah, uh, G. It says uh, reside, reside at and be responsible for the orderly conduct of the full board monthly meetings. Uh, so we're not a full board tonight, for instance. Yeah, maybe that's Did the wrong drop word. The word, drop the word yeah. full? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments or questions on the other B policies? Yeah, yeah, well, BDE says full also. And, uh, which letter? Uh, B, D, E. Which, whereabouts? Uh, uh, and letter, letter B, the second sentence. Okay. Yeah. The word full is in there also. The second line of yeah. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have it. Thank you. Okay, anything else on those Bs? Nope. Okay, so then that actually wraps up all of our B policies, so I guess that we'll be having a vote on those in, in September. Okay, so moving on to the I policies. Um, and th this covers about, there are 25 policies here that we have in our packets for first reading. <laughs> this is not actually all of the I policies. Um, there are some more. But we began working on these last summer. We've obviously had other work that we've been dealing with throughout the year. The policy committee, you've heard about all of that throughout the year. Um, but we did want to at least get these done for first reading so that we could vote on these um, in the fall, finally. So are there um, specific ones that people would like to, that you have questions about, that you'd like to pull out? Um, that you have need clarification or have questions on? Yes, let me see, page 38. Oh, it's just a typographical error. Where is that? The Henry? one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh sentence, the word that has been misspelled. Okay. <laughs> It says T-A-T, yeah. mm -hmm. okay, uh, page 64. Uh, I couldn't understand what that was all about. That is um, year-end activities. And that just is that, like the students tonight were talking about the beach trips yeah. that they were going to be taking. Yeah. So that would be considered a year-end activity. Okay. So this day will occur as near to the end of the school year as possible. Yeah. Right. Okay. And 66. Mm. Huh. Oh, yeah, there's a typographical error. In the second paragraph, the last, the last line is a capital R. Gotcha. Okay. Got it? Yep. yep. All right. And one more I have. 
if I can, page 72. Uh, oh, the first option's been all crossed out, so why do we have option two? Uh, because if you look at the paragraph right up above that, Henry, it, it mentions that the uh, local boards may, uh, may approve educational materials. Um, we have included two options that local boards may want to consider. The policy committee wanted option two, not option one, but we wanted to show both for everybody. So we're going to take it out of the... We're going to take it out altogether. We're going to take it that will out be and it will no longer be option two. It'll simply be... Part of okay. the wording. That's all I had. Thanks, Henry, for looking at that so carefully. Ann? Mm -hmm. I, I have a, um, a question. Um, on uh, the policy regarding athletic trips on page 65, um, item number B. Um, no, I'm sorry, A that starts off and says all trips organized by a coach must be submitted in writing. Um, I'd like to get more information about trips that aren't organized by a coach but involve a majority of our athletes. And I want to make sure that there is an all-inclusive type of philosophy to that, or if there should be. We are deleting page 65. And we're replacing it we're with, page with page 78. Oh, 78. Okay. So well, that's, that's the recommendation of the policy committee. I missed that. But it may still be the same question. Right. You may still want something like that included to that effect. So yeah. I, 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 I am thinking of a specific example, um, and I just don't know where that, that discussion has occurred. Um, I would like to bring it up at an athletic steering committee to get some answers, um, but policy probably hasn't looked at it. Um, that, not that issue. Not that issue. Yeah. I mean, we, we have, a, for example, a team where someone is organizing from what I understand, an, an athletic trip as part of a pre-training, and but there's a possibility that not all team members oh, will be asked are, to, are invited. invited, or it's um, oh. commitments need to be made before mm -hmm. those athletes are. Um, and also, I don't know what the liability issues are on that trip also. Um, if a, a parent is bringing along Three quarters of the members of a team, um, w you know whether those permission release forms are being utilized. Mm -hmm. Well, that sort of speaks to that other issue of parents yeah. driving, but but the first issue isn't it never came up. So I mean, I guess so. Should we, you know, discuss that and s prior to the athletic? I mean, you might not have an opportunity in the athletic well, steering is, committee to discuss that. I mean, or is that something that should be, you know, part of this policy? And I think it should be part of the policy, mm -hmm. and um, I'm prepared to, to bring it up at the steering committee tomorrow. Um, and this is a first reading, so if um, I'm able to, to share anything, mm -hmm. I certainly would do that at the first policy meeting in September okay. before this comes for a final vote. Okay, great, thanks. Just can... Is that, is that, do you want more specific language if it's not the team? Because it, the policy that's being recommended reads, if the team has not been officially selected, the trip must be made available to all students interested in being a member of that team. So is the situation, do we need more clarification on that, that the, the students aren't yet members of the team and the commitment is beforehand? Do we need to clarify that better? I'm more concerned about the fact that it, it, it's a trip that's, being organized by a coach versus a, a trip that's being organized by someone other than a coach that allows them to do something with our school students or athletes um, that might not fall, or does it fall, under okay. insurance or philosophy or okay. policy. 
okay so we'll wait to see in september what the athletic steering committee has discussed and talk about it at the first policy meeting just making a note in alan's package that the issue parent trips so that it's brought up okay other other questions or thoughts kathy um two things one um on page nine the extended school year services um we start on the first paragraph we ended by uh talking about an iep um i'm not a fan of uh acronyms and i'd like to have that spelled out because it doesn't even indicate there anywhere what an iep is Mm -hmm. um, later on we talk about a pet and I guess you could probably go back and say well that must be the pupil evaluation team and I understand people who use it on a regular basis mm -hmm. understand it but for those who might not mm -hmm. they're not going to know what okay. that is um, and the other one was on page seven holiday gift giving um, I think this is probably more of a personal uh, concern but um, I agree that um, we have to be careful as as members of a staff or as employees to not um, uh, accept uh, items of large value um, we indicate here the board's policy on gifts to employees shall be adhered to carefully um, I'm not sure who we're directing that to uh, maybe we're directing it to the employees I don't know how we uh, intend to handle uh, a parent who wants to give a gift to an employee and who decides whether that monetary value is too much or not. I know in, in um, uh, another life, uh, $25 was the limit, and you had, if it was over $25, you were meant to give it back. But then going on, um, the di my real concern is the district's policy is to encourage donations of an item for the district or for a classroom or activity in lieu of personal gifts to the employee. I guess I have a problem with the policy telling parents um, how they need to give a gift or not give a gift. In other words, giving a gift to a classroom or so forth. If I'm a parent and I wish to give a gift to a teacher for whatever reason, I feel that that's my prerogative. It shouldn't be um, under an umbrella that I now feel obligated to take, change that gift to something for the classroom. And so I'm concerned about us dictating to parents as to how they may or may not give a gift because a gift to me is a gift from one person to another you know based on um, a, a, a want to, to give a gift um, but I wouldn't have a problem in putting a monetary value on that like a $25 and so I just want to bring that up for consideration and I think those are some good points I think maybe that's something that yeah. you know we should take back and look at and just yeah. re-review mm -hmm. next yeah. time yeah that's a good point Anything else? Terrific. The last item, HI. Consideration of a proposal to grant the superintendent authority to hire over the summer. Historically, um, we have done a motion which grants the sitting superintendent the authority to hire individuals when we are not meeting in regular session and what happens is that the first chance we do meet in regular session which I believe is in August all of the documentation would be presented to all of us for review um, it's sort of an after-the-fact thing because at that point the teachers are already hired but no teacher wants to wait around for a board to convene so it's uh, behind we're sort of between a rock and a hard place on that and I tend to trust our administrators and our superintendent with that regardless therefore I move that we authorize the sitting superintendent for the period beginning July 5th uh, June 15th through the date of the next formal business meeting to hire um, and report to us the hires of all new teachers and ed techs. We don't usually report ed techs. Okay. Then we'll leave it at teachers. Can I have a second? 
Kathy, thank you. All in favor? More questions? I'm sorry, did you, did you transfer that authority to Alan Hawkins? I, July? by means of saying the sitting superintendent. Okay. Wasn't clear. Thank you. Sorry. Should have been, I should have been clear on that. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Yes, we do. Um, consideration of recommendation. What? Uh, oh, I. The uh, personnel committee. It was the personnel committee, not the finance committee, that made that recommendation. I'm just going to expedite this, okay? I move that we accept the recommendation of the personnel committee regarding salaries and benefits for non-classified employees for 2005 06. Second. Thank you. Questions, comments? All in favor? Thank you. I guess that is finally it. We have, does anybody from the public wish to make a comment? <laughs> does any school board member wish to request an agenda item that's been previously denied? Announcement of upcoming meetings. There are no upcoming meetings formally planned yet, except for perhaps policy. Yep. Uh, policy committee does have a meeting set for July. Um, I'm not going to say that to because actually I do need to change that. So for those of you who are coming, <laughs> I need to change that. Sorry. It needs to, to be announced. They will be announced on the, uh, the website. So please pay very close attention to the website while you're on vacation. Uh, we do not need consideration of the superintendent's request. We're done. Um, this meeting is adjourned with my personal wish that you all have a great summer, good vacations, kick back, relax, and just have a wonderful time. See you, Thank you. August. <sighs>